So recently, somebody asked me something interesting. They didn't want to know what my least favorite or most favorite toy was, which I get a lot, and it's kind of easy to answer. They wanted to know what fell in the middle, just squarely in the middle, out of the over a thousand Transformers I've owned in my lifetime, which is the one that shoots right for average. So this sets me off on a little bit of a quest, where we look for the middle in my entire toy collection, and it has me looking over things that I would normally just pass over because, hey, I don't think about them much. But that makes it perfect for this quest, which means we are starting with this guy. This is Cybertron Quick Mix, a Voyager class figure from the Giant Planet line, meaning he is a construction vehicle. And it's not one I normally think about because, well, let's be frank, even if you're watching the Galaxy Force version of the animated series, this guy really has next to nothing to do and no real standout personality. So he's just there. He is, of course, a big orange cement mixer, which I appreciate them going with a cement mixer and not making it green and purple. They also didn't make it actual G1 uh, quick mix colors, too. They went for something completely new with a lot of dark gray and hits of yellow mixed in, as well as a off-white and gray for the drum. So he definitely has his own look to him. It's nothing spectacular. You know, the orange is a little bit dull, which is correct for a construction vehicle. And the yellow hits pretty bright, which breaks it up fairly well in its little spots. We'll see more of that in the robot mode, but for now, it's just pretty much okay. There's nothing too thrilling about the color scheme to me. There is some nice molding going on. Here in the cab section, we do have translucent windows peeking through and a lot of little heavy machinery details molded into the surface of the plastic. You also have some added bits like the smokestacks, which are done up in a gunmetal gray color, as well as this piece out here. I'll be honest, I don't know if cement mixers have this gigantic wedge of steel shooting out from the front, but knowing me and how wrong I always get vehicles, I'm going to assume somewhere, somewhere in the universe there is. And we'll just leave it at that. I would rather guess it that way and be wrong. Because I have a little bit of red paint here for some detail that I'm sure is important to a cement mixer. And a little bit more wiring detail along the sides. This is actually going to be like the inside of his shoulder assembly. So I like it that they actually included some detailing there. Just to make sure it didn't look too obvious as a robot part. Speaking of, there's his arm. Yeah, uh, it's just there. It's... Uh, Pretty obviously an arm, there's the elbow, there's the fingers. Yeah, so th this is uh, where you give the giant planet guys a bit of a slide. You know, it's a Cybertronian style design for a construction vehicle. And it's, you know, they don't need to worry about hiding. So why would they hide all of their components? Because that's the point of the toy line. But yeah, it's just a big arm. It doesn't really go anywhere or do anything. So that's uh, a little bit unfortunate. You can also pretty easily see what's going to be his robot mode thighs. You know, the hip joints very clearly there. The gap between them is very visible. So he does have some noticeable flaws in his overall look and assembly. Up top, we have the Autobot logo, which technically isn't there in the Galaxy Force version. Well... No, I didn't think they did join the Autobots. I don't know, Galaxy Force is really weird about who got to wear a sigil and who didn't. But mounted up top, we have his little Minicon partner, because that was the giant planet gimmick. Everyone got Minicons. We're going to take a look at him in a bit, but for now, yeah, pretty basic. This little uh, standing ramp for his Minicon, as well as where I assume the water goes in. I don't know where you put water on a... Cybertronian planet in, but hey, he gets the concrete from somewhere, I guess. And so aside from that, a bit of rolling, he doesn't do too bad. Let's take a quick look at the Minicon Strip Mine. That's a pleasant name for an Autobot Minicon. So yeah, he's this big... I'm going to go laser drill on this one because this thing doesn't look like it's going to drill through a whole lot, but I presume there's some precision work this guy could be doing. He's definitely supposed to be doing some kind of heavy work. He is on treads. They don't move. No fake wheels or anything. But he also has a targeting scope on him, which is where I'm going laser. So he's pretty basic in design. He's got some blue and yellow to him that makes him pop a lot from his big partner. But also, 
a little bit of clear plastic here and there just to break things up, just to keep it interesting, I should say. And that's pretty much it. The molding is pretty basic on this guy. If you want to attach him via a Minicon port, you do have a couple on Quick Mix. There's one here at the top of the cab and one here at the very rear, which I assume is a rear bumper of sorts. Stay pegged in. You'll notice the drum does not like to stay pegged in on this toy. And that's pretty much it, but you can't actually attach him unless you flip out the legs and start the transformation because his peg hole is on his robot mode chest, which is completely obscured by the legs. So that don't work too well. That said, he does have a peg back here that goes up and goes down, and that is a Minicon peg. So you can attach him to other Minicon ports because, hey, why not? So I'll go ahead and quickly transform this guy. He's a pretty basic dude. He also has this neat little trick where when you combine his arms here to vehicle mode, it automatically flips up his little targeting scope. That's kind of neat. And flips it down when you're done. So hey, it's a, it's a very simple trick. But hey, it's a toy. It's supposed to have simple little tricks. So pull that out, pull that out, and... Bada boom, simple as that. We have strip mine in his robot mode. This is the only part where you see a little bit of paint on the guy because he gets a little bit of silver on the chest and a little bit of red for his eye visor. Pretty basic guy. Shares pretty much the same detailing in this mode and no hands. He will never ever high five and that's just sad. So let's see what else he can do. Well, if we do this, well, I should, I, sh I should say, that's what it looks like when you actually have it correctly positioned. I forgot to actually flip it up close. So that's position number two, which we then flip over here. I was, I was trying this guy out before just to make sure everything still worked and I uh, forgot, I neglected to uh, change that over. Yay, I'm out of practice. So with those pegs moved over to the side, we can use these little peg holes on the sides of his arm and that will let us peg strip mine into the back and now rather than riding in vehicle mode he can stand at attention and look like the most epic of cement truck drivers ever so this is kind of a goofy little thing but i do like that he has an alternate way of riding and i like that there's engineering specifically for making that happen it's a little bit of attention that they didn't need to put into but they did and that does make it a pretty cool thing if you want to make him actually do something in this mode well, first off, we're going to have to connect the barrel in with these little yellow clips you see there at the top. And then we can readjust this section in order to get it on a level plane. At this point, it's time to bring in the cyber key. Purple with silver trim and a lot of gears. I really like the designs on cyber keys. Don't know if you noticed because I mention it every time. So let's go ahead and plug in this one. If we a little bit of a tight fit on him, but once it's pegged in and we push forward, the drum splits open and it reveals a single missile. Yep, a uh, gigantic drum, one missile. So I will go ahead and show off the missile because hey, they actually did something here where it's multi-layered, which is interesting. They actually added this little clear warhead and blue uh, sphere or, or uh, drum around the top of the barrel. It actually makes it look like a really heavy-duty missile. That said, it's still but a single missile in a gigantic space. You know, considering basic class figures, scout class figures in this toy line usually had, you know, could have a missile gimmick. Scattershot had two missiles. This seems a little bit underwhelming. Even if you make the missile fancy, it's still just a single missile. And while I appreciate the idea of making it look like it does a lot of damage with that huge warhead, it's still just one missile. This screams like multi-missile payload or spinning Gatling gun gimmick. It just feels like that space could have been used for something a lot cooler and a lot more distinct from all of the other insert key reveal missile gimmicks that Cybertron seemed to go to when the toy really didn't have much uh, much else that it could do. That said, 
with strip mine riding on top and all these hinges and swivels straightened out, you now also have this ability to wheel him around as this gigantic missile turret, which is actually kind of cool and gives him an interesting level of playability. So we're rambling a lot here, and this review is going long because mini toys with mini cons always take a long time to review. So we'll get all this flipped in, uh, flip in the pegs and pull them back down, and we'll go ahead and get this guy to robot mode at long last. So hi, robot head. We're going to have to go and flip those down first, unpeg the arms. You can see where uh, I kind of forget about this toy from time to time because... Heat transformation, yes, it's uh, not all that, uh, not all that transformy. It's pretty basic. See, just like that, we're already done with the top half. We go down to the bottom half. There's a little bit of cleverness to uh, how the cab transforms, but beyond that, that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and flip those. No. The U.S. instructions want you to believe this to be some kind of work mode. That's just because we have not uh, actually properly uh, mm, properly extended him. He has this weird automorph thing where he has this big kind of high-shouldered thing with no hips. And then you uh, push all of this down and er, that kind of just spreads him out, evens him out, and gives him a bit more of a, a normal stance. It's a weird little bit of engineering. It's a weird bit of automorph that uh, doesn't work all that well, but it's there. Hey, and that is our robot mode. Very simple transformation. Not a whole lot going on, and it's uh, it's it leads to a robot. I'll give it that. But uh, there are things to talk about. We'll get to them one by one. We're going along on this review as it is. So head design wise. It does have something of an interesting expression. For, I mean, for a construction guy, he's got a very night motif thing going on, with the exception of this big yellow antenna and mic piece put on. It's not... It's either, he's either a Cybertronian gamer or he works the drive through at Cybertronian McDonald's. One or the other, I'm not going to judge. You know, a job is a job, okay? I will not begrudge him his. But it is, uh, at least trying for its own thing. It does have light piping going on in translucent color, which doesn't really uh, show his eyes too well, but at the very least, he doesn't look dead, so hey, I will take that. Detailing-wise, he does have plenty of sculpted details that we can see. Again, his surface is littered with a whole bunch of little circuitry patterns, lots of little machinery details exposed through. I do like all these little wires going through his... Uh, midsection. I don't know why, as a transformer, you would leave like loose wires hanging out, you know, on the surface of your body. But hey, hey, that's the risk he wants to take. Let him take it. I also like these little pipes along the sides. You get the idea of like fuel canisters or things left over from vehicle mode. Very little of it has actually been painted. You get a little bit of silver through the chest going down into this section in the belly, but that's pretty much it on the front. A little bit of yellow there. And a little bit of this strange, very pale gold kind of color. It just hits the two shoulders, and that's pretty much the only place you see it on the toy. It's an interesting color, but it's uh, not really doing a whole lot. It's just too faded and dull to really stand out, which is kind of unfortunate. Overall, speaking of failing to stand out, the overall opinion I get of this guy is flat. He really doesn't have a lot of three-dimensional detailing. Because this is all like the top of his vehicle mode and that drum needs all that space, uh, you don't really get a whole lot of big pop-out details. You don't get that big chest that you typically see on a Transformer. It all just kind of flattens out because the space is so vital. And that's really an unfortunate detriment to the toy in robot mode because he's... I don't know, it just feels like like he's just a step up from the details just being stickered on, which is not a good thing. You'll remember Titanium Megatron really kind of bugged me on that level. Uh, also, of course, the big elephant in the room is that massive, <laughs> about the size of an elephant, that massive drum is now his entire arm. This is always why mixing, uh, or a mixing truck or cement mixer vehicles 
are so hard to do in Transformers because that drum, especially if you wanted to spin around, really doesn't have anything to do in uh, in robot mode. It's ironic that in my entire life, the the best one I've seen was a GoBot. That one actually figured out how to get the drum out of the way. And it's got a brand new one now that I think of it. Need to pick that up. But yeah, it's, it's just a big, big, clumsy, cumbersome arm. Thankfully, his feet are gigantic, so he does have some stability to, to uh, hold it up. But he does still want to go to the right as a result, which is a little bit unfortunate. So what do we have for articulation on this guy? Well, the head does rotate around, so it's all good there. He gets a little bit of a weak ratchet there, and very, very good ratchet on the universal joint in the shoulder. You have a full bicep rotation there. You have no wrist rotation, which means that 90 degree elbow is permanently in the bar curler position. Unfortunately, a lot of hollow plastic on the side of the arm you usually see if you want to bend the elbow. That sucks. So you have a lot of the same articulation over here, elbow, hinge. The elbow does have quite a bit more bend to it, ironically, considering it's this gigantic lump of plastic hanging off of it. And you also have a, uh, you also have the extra rotation swivel there if you want to get this big hunk out of the way, which is uh, sometimes preferable to do. Nothing in the waist. It's mostly the automorphs thing. Otherwise, I don't see why he couldn't have had a waist joint. The hips are at a very slight angle, which makes them a little bit strange when you start posing them forward. Also, that automorph doesn't really click in very well, or, you know, at all. So unfortunately, uh, they do kind of, you know, this does kind of slide in and out when you're working with the legs. Thankfully, at least, very heavy ratchet joints going on there. Also, heavy ratchets in the knees as well, which also have a rotation, which doesn't quite want to work when the knee is bent. When it's straight, works fine. When it's bent, starts getting things in the way. So that's that's too bad. And then nothing really in the ankles. You get a rotation at least. But you're going to want to keep them wherever it keeps that barrel from making them fall over. That's pretty much your only goal here. Now, that should be it, but it does have a few other hidden tricks. For instance, you do have Minicon ports here as well as on his nipples. I don't know. I really don't know. But you can also pull this piece free. It's pegged in, but it's very loose connection. Now, if you want, you can flip it over and extend the longer barrels to the front so he has a larger uh, hand, hand weapon pointed that way. Or that Minicon peg does also fit into his hand, so you can also go for that if you really want to. So he also gets a hand weapon out of it. And then, of course, there's Stripmine again, who, if we uh, quickly go through his transformation, get him back into uh, a vehicle mode really quickly, that extra hinge can't, that extra peg uh, can be used to also attach him or give or uh, let him work as a uh, secondary weapon, which comes up looking very Target Master. So you have that going for you as well. But we also talked about that Minicon port. So very quickly. Mm. Mm. Oh, hang on. <laughs> this was going well for a bit. We can rotate the whole thing around there. There we go. And get a big super weapon out of it. So it's a... I'm not sure how much of that is intentional. Just based on... Uh, I'm not sure how easy those guns are supposed to be to unpeg from his arms. But it does add a surprising level of little playability, little things you can do in order to make his uh, weaponry loadout a little bit more interesting. And I dare say a little bit more interesting than just a single missile hidden in that giant barrel. So that is Quick Mix. He does have a lot going on despite a very simple transformation and a rather uneventful robot mode design outside of an interesting helmet, which does have a few features that keep him looking unique. Uh, the colors are okay. The robot at the vehicle mode itself is okay uh, it's really the little interactions he has with strip mine and the little things you can do to give him more playability more accessory options that makes him stand out just a little bit more so while i think he falls into the average range of my toy line i think he falls a little bit to the high side of it so he's not going to be the middle we are still going to be looking for 
the middle. How long it takes, nobody knows.